Hey everyone, so as some of you may know by now, I'm a pretty big model train person and I figured it'd be kind of cool to show how I've implemented 3D printing into some of my various model train projects. So let me take you along on building a new cab for my little box cab. Okay, so bear with me. I've got the 3D printer cranking out a 3D hubs order right now for an awesome customer. You know who you are, you're cool. And we're now at the point with the model where we need to hit it with a little bit of sandable primer. I know we've already come along with a little bit of squadron putty, but the main reason that I wanna hit it with some sandable primer is there's still a few spots that I can see things that I don't really want showing up on the final model. So that's the main reason why. Also what I've done is I've just quickly masked the model off. The main reason being is the inside obviously has been painted matte black. We did that in the previous episode and yes, I'm aware there's a gap in my masking. The main thing is I just don't want a ton of overspray going on the inside and messing up the paint job in there. So, I mean, if there's a little bit of overspray that gets in there, it's not the end of the world, but I'm trying to avoid that if possible. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it down with a little bit of sandable primer may take a coat or two. Really, I'm just trying to eliminate the crazy visible layer lines and spots. You probably can't see it on camera, but that's the whole reason why. So let me go ahead and do that. And while I'm at it, I might contemplate a locomotive color because I don't really want to do gray. I'm thinking maybe silver, but we'll see. Locomotives came in a lot of different colors. Okay, so at this point, the paint is still wet on the model, which is why I'm rotating the aluminum block. But coat one of the yellow is on here, which is awesome. <clears throat> Sadly, my can of spray paint decided to be a little bit of a pain in the butt when spraying. So the paint job isn't perfect, but you know what? It's a mining locomotive and the main reason why the railroad Painted it yellow, we'll say, is for visibility. They weren't trying to go for the world's prettiest paint job. So, obviously with that said, I'm going to leave this project here for the night and then tomorrow I'll hit it down with another coat of paint before I run to church. And then when I get back, it'll probably get hit down with one more. So that way I get a couple of coats on there. One other thing that I know you guys are probably wondering about is, yes, I went over the gray primer straight away with the yellow. I know normally you're supposed to use white as it makes it a lot more bright and shiny, but I intentionally did not want this to be a crazy, crazy shade of yellow. I wanted it to actually be a little more muted and I've done this in the past and quite like the result, so I'm sticking with it. Hey everyone, so it's the next day. So overnight, pretty much what I did is I painted the model, dropped it on the floor and broke it in pieces by accident. Then I glued it back together with this little brace. I'm gonna post the files up to the Thingiverse page. It pretty much just got glued in at the bottom and holds everything together. But spray painting this has been kind of a pain because my spray can has a really crappy nozzle that instead of sending out a fine mist of paint, it's more like throwing globs of paint at it. So I had to come along and wet sand it a couple of times. There's a couple of areas where the primer starts to show through, but on a model like this, I actually think it adds so much of the character of it, being that it is somewhat of a faded older paint job, so it's not a bad thing. The joints aren't perfect either, but kind of you know falls into the character of the model. We're definitely actually going to use that to our advantage and put some more weathering in those spots as areas like that tended to rust a bit more. But that's beside the point at this point because pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it sit for the rest of the day to finish curing. Then we can come along and do the weathering, hopefully sometime tonight. So that's pretty much where it's at right now. So I'm really liking the yellow on it. It is a bit, bit of a strong yellow, but by the time we get done weathering it, it's definitely gonna look a lot more like a locomotive that has seen a hard life working in a mining operation or something like that versus it just rolled out of the paint shop. So let's uh, let the paint dry some more and then we'll go ahead and work on weathering. 
Okay, so <clears throat> I've let the model sit for a while. What I've ended up doing is removing the paint and some of the rubber cement in spots, as you can probably see there. I intentionally did not go all the way down to the base plastic metal mix in certain spots to kind of simulate like the outer coat of paint got scratched, but the underside is still there. So now what I'm going to do is come along and just smooth over the areas with a little bit of wet sand. Then I'm going to drop it into the resting solution. I'll post a link to the video on how to do that and also the protopasta page that says how to do that. It's pretty simple. So I'm not going to go into depth on it on this video just because it's been covered before. Then once that is done, which will probably take 12 to 24 hours, Okay, so it's been about two, three days and I've tried to accelerate the resting process as fast as I can, but it's just not coming along fast enough for the timeline of this video. So we're gonna cut out the resting at this point. I am gonna go back and do it more. It's just as of right now, I've had to cut it because of time reasons for the shoot. That said, we can jump ahead with weathering the model. So the next step will be taking this from this bright bright yellow and toning it down a bit. So what I'm going to use is this, um, the black wash from the Micromark Rust and Dust set. If you don't have this, you can also use India ink and rubbing alcohol. The idea is we're just going to lay the model on its side and brush a little bit on here. What it's going to do is it's going to pretty much go into the cracks and corners and crevices and help draw them out visually. So I've set the model up on its side. I'm going to brush this on here, then hit this with the hair dryer and repeat that as necessary for the sides. Only reason why I'm using a hair dryer is just to speed things up for filming. Otherwise, I just let it air dry. So when I'm done with that, I'll come back in and check with you guys. Okay, so already this model is looking a whole lot different. It might be a little hard to tell on camera, but it definitely looks like it's, it's had a rough life so far, which is exactly the look that I'm going for. I'm trying to go just for this grungy old locomotive look. I wanna overdo it, but I also wanna tone things down. This is a locomotive that works in a quarry hauling magnesite, I believe it's called. So it deals with a lot of dirt, a lot of just various stuff. So the ore itself on the layout club that I model, it's kind of this brownish color. And these are self-adhering weathering chalks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crappy, and I mean crappy old paintbrush here and come along and just lightly dust the model down with them. When I'm all done with this, I'm going to spray I'm going to very carefully try re-resting the areas that need resting and then spray the whole model down with some dull coat, a clear sealer to help lock everything in as the weathering liquid that I use is still susceptible to alcohol and water. And I'm a little bit concerned that when I expose the model to the vinegar again, it might or might not undo the weathering, but hey, we'll find out. So let me go ahead and weather this guy up a little bit with the chalks and I'll hop back on. Okay, so here is the overall weathering job. Sorry if it's a little bit hard to see in spots on this door, 
a little, little uh, crazy with the black, but you could always argue it's also access to the engine room, so it's gonna get a little filthy. But hey, you know, it's a uh, mining and quarrying locomotive. It's not exactly gonna be the world's prettiest thing on the face of the earth. I mean, personally, overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Still need to try and work on getting those few areas that I took the time to mask to actually really rust, but I think it'll happen. So I'm going to call the episode here for time reasons. Next week, we're going to work on the roof for this, and then I'll discuss just the basics of wiring up the headlights that are directional that go on here, and then showing you guys the locomotive doing its thing. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this episode to make it with Calvin. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that YouTuber stuff. And I will see you here next time with yet another episode of building the world's ugliest box cab locomotive. But it's kind of cool.